All right, we'll go ahead and move into our next presentation. And we have Carrie here in person. If Carrie, if you'd like to uh, come on up and we'll get your slides, slides ready. And I'll introduce, we have a, a few speakers and we have two other speakers that are uh, joining us virtually. Uh, so Carrie has worked for the state of Utah for over 31 years. She began her career with the Utah DOT Motor Carrier Division, working with the safety net system and moved to the Highway Safety Office in 2007. And joining her is Juan Medina, a research assistant professor at the University of Utah. And Juan has over 15 years of experience in transportation engineering, and his research has a strong data-driven component focused on traffic safety and traffic control systems. And finally, we also have uh, Robert Miles, the Director of Traffic and Safety with the Utah DOT. And he joined UDOT in 2009 and has served there in multiple capacities. And so they are going to be sharing some information with us regarding their transportation and public safety crash data initiative to unify crash records and improve integration and sharing. And this, uh, I had the pleasure of having several conversations with them leading up to um, them agreeing to present this information. And it's, it's a fantastic project looking at basically how to integrate data records across multiple agencies who so are all reporting from the same system. So we look forward to hearing more about it. All right, good morning. Okay, first uh, we're gonna hear from Juan. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you, Brenda, from the, for the introductions. Um, um, I'm Juan Medina, I'm the principal investigator of the um, Crash Day Initiative, which uh, normally we just simply call UTAPS, and we'll call it like that during the presentation for short. Um, and I would like to start with a quick overview of the reasoning behind this effort. Um, and um, how the flow of information was pre-UTAPS implementation. And um, in the slide here, uh, we see a high level set of stages that describe the main uh, directions that the data uh, took in the state uh, from um, crash report creation to consumption by agencies and end users. Um, and in this case, from the perspective of our main partners, which are the DOT and the Highway Safety Office out of the Department of Public Safety. Um, and I would like to start to um, direct your attention to the left side of the, of the slide where the data is captured um, by police officers. And here we're representing both uh, cases where the um, officer is capturing data in the field using a laptop in the squad car, or at a later time uh, when they can complete and submit um, uh, the crash records in, in, in an office, for example, or off-site. Um, in Utah, this capturing process happens, um, and this is very particular to us, uh, using third-party software where each of the law enforcement agencies have their own agreement with the different vendors. So this creates in itself a particular situation on, on data capturing. So we have a number of agencies throughout the state each of them have their own agreement with different vendors that have uh, gone through a process of being approved by our IT state IT group, which is called DTS uh, for uh, the Department of Technology Services. And uh, so each record is submitted by this third party software to our central repository at DTS where uh, it is maintained for all purposes uh, that this data touches. So that includes legal purposes, safety improvement purposes, and so on. Um, from there, before UTAPS, um, our partners basically obtain a copy of these crashes and apply their own processes separate. So these in, um, in practice created right away data silos where the two copies were given their own treatments and um, were applied different management uh, strategies with um, the perspective of each of the agencies that were using the data. So for example, in the workflow that goes to the bottom of the slide, we see that um, the DOT had an SMS system, which was a full blown data content management system. And, um, then had a series of interfaces that were provided to end users and within the, the organization as well. Uh, on the upper part, we see that there was a database connection to a copy that uh, DPS or Highway Safety Office had access to 
and they apply their processes uh, to that data as well. Now, there is, or there was still some sort of uh, coordination, particularly for federal reporting when it comes to fatal crashes and fatalities. So um, for um, establishing goals and, and safety improvements, um, this coordination helped on the um, basically getting together final numbers for uh, start taking measures and, and developing strategies. Um, so at this point, you can see that um, um, probably UTAP's uh, main goal was to provide that connection that broke the silos and unified the, the source of uh, crash data in the state. So what we have now post UTAP's implementation is that one element uh, in between our partners that unifies the source of crash data and effectively streamline the workflows uh, within each of our agencies. Um, it also made uh, the resource utilization more efficient and prevented some of the uh, effort duplication that was being conducted separately in our case at the DOT and the Highway Safety Office. Um, by having UTAPs also in the middle as the, um, uh, the data stewards and data managers, we also improve consistency on uh, data reporting and also um, open new and exciting opportunities for research and collaboration. So we see uh, UTAPs as that unifying factor that has now allowed um, agencies to work together closely and that's something that we would like to highlight in the presentation, how um, not only this was about uh, data, but we found out uh, or found ourselves working now much closer together than, than we did before. So um, our daily operations um, provide continuous services to all our users and our users um, include internal and external uh, groups that we have defined. And I wanted to highlight uh, the different um, environments that we provide to the state uh, for these type of services. So first, uh, we receive daily records uh, from DTS that uh, a pre um, set of scripts manage before that data goes to production. Once it goes to production, it's available for uh, our partners to view and edit. And I would like to highlight also that uh, capability to edit crash records uh, using web, web interfaces. So uh, the system goes beyond um, the display or, or, or ability to produce reports and allows users to edit certain characteristics during data quality assurance processes. Um, in addition to interfaces to view and edit, we have a query builder that um, incorporates a full-blown uh, SQL uh, capability to query and create uh, complex interactions with and or operations and different levels uh, of complexity that uh, so our users can actually filter the data any way they want uh, without the need for coding. Um, we also provide a series of connections uh, tables and views to different partners within our organizations and also externally to be able to share this data and put it out there to different groups. Um, a different environment, um, we call it testing, but it's more of our uh, data quality um, assurance um, environment where a set of students, and this is when uh, maybe the, the partnership also with the university uh, becomes uh, interesting. Uh, we do have a, a group of students that um, help us previous training offered, of course, and uh, using a data um, quality or, or data review process guideline, uh, help us um, improving or making sure that uh, data in the crash reports is consistent. Uh, so examples would be, um, let's say the, the first hand for event, and uh, the manner of collision uh, are consistent with uh, vehicle directions and uh, the vehicle maneuvers that we, we see in the crash reports. Um, in addition to that, we have a third environment, which is 
effectively our sandbox or our playground where uh, new features and capabilities are um, tested and are, are basically developed before they moved up to test first and ultimately to production for consumption by our partners. So I see a system that initially was intended to be just that uh, repository after the official repository, if you will, uh, has become um, a more, much more powerful tool that um, uh, incorporates a, a series of elements that maybe at the beginning we didn't foresee coming, but it has evolved into this comprehensive uh, system that we actually have developed in uh, mostly on open source platforms and is very modular, which allow us to maybe think in the future, sharing some of these efforts for others to use. So um, at this point, I think I will pass um, the turn to Robert and he will continue uh, with our challenges and opportunities and lessons learned. Thank you. Thank you, Juan and, and, and Carrie and Brenda for the opportunity to speak today. Juan talked a lot about our history and he started to highlight some of the opportunities we had and why we wanted to do this. So we would like to illustrate kind of the complexity of our, our customer chain, if you will. Um, we use the, the same set of outputs serving many in many groups. Um, it's not just a highway safety office and traffic and safety that, is, that are utilizing this data. We also have uh, groups from our traffic safety program management, both motorized and non-motorized user, users focused groups, Utah Highway Patrol, um, local law enforcement agencies, public reports and statistics. Um, this is really important for us, public reports and statistics, as we, as we produce numbers or, or statistics for, um, for use by the public and by media, it, it looks kind of bad if, uh, if two members of the governor's staff keep coming up with different numbers. So this is one of the things that we really, this has really helped us a lot and be able to have one number and one story that we tell. Codes research, um, and behavioral and demographic safety trends, uh, the responsibilities in the motor carrier division, um, work provided by consultants and researchers and design um, in health backgrounds and, and uh, in all of our different research that we do. Um, our fatal crash review process, having consistent numbers and consistent data and uh, our roadway safety performance um, reporting, um, both, as, both in terms of how, how effective are our assets, what are our operations look like, how do we process insurance claims, um, how do we focus roadway design projects um, to resolve safety issues, how do we focus law enforcement activities and, and efforts to resolve safety issues. If we all have the same data, and we, we are serving each other, or we're sharing that data with each other, we have a better process, excuse me, a better environment um, to solve those problems in. But that didn't come without its challenges and its opportunities. Um, some of the challenges we identified early on um, in our process was cultural differences between our agencies. Um, our law enforcement agencies and our DOT, we, we are different agencies. We have different focuses and we, we approach problems a little bit differently, but we are both trying to solve the same problem. And we all have the same goal. So that understanding of cultural differences and that ability to communicate um, with each other is, is proven extremely important. The opportunity that's presented is, is we truly are stronger together. Um, we find ourselves influencing each other and supporting each other in the future. Um, we've, we've found opportunities to consolidate resources and repurpose some resources for other efforts. A lot of this happens through our coordinating councils like the, like the Utah Traffic Records Coordinating Council and other task, for, task forces we have. Um, one of the challenges is how the data affects each, each agency. Um, Carrie and I have talked many times about the level at which we use the data. Um, in a lot of efforts that, that she was undertaking, just knowing the date that a crash occurred in the location of an intersection was, pr was pretty good, was adequate. For the need at the time but when we approach it from a design uh, point of view we really need to know what what direction that those vehicles were traveling before the crash occurred or what approach it happened on so we know where to focus our efforts to look at wide needs or to look at any of the different engineering solutions so understanding that 
and understanding each other's needs and, and why those different things are important to each other. Us understanding why highway safety needs certain aspects of the data um, has really helped our relationship and helped make this process successful. Um, that provides greater opportunities and consistency and uniformity. Um, what a, a challenge that we, we struggle with that I probably struggle with a lot because I'm an engineer. So low social skills, lots of expectations. Um, but perfection is not the first step. Uh, we need to recognize that where we're at on the process and that this was an initial, initial point to begin with. And what we were going to learn would help us grow into the future if we keep listening to those lessons and we keep talking to each other. And that has allowed us to think differently and broader. Um, it's, it's opened up some very interesting research opportunities for us um, between our two agencies and our partners to look at things like demographics and behavioral research um, in ways that we hadn't before to look at how we can better um, incorporate this data into design projects or um, outreach efforts in, in ways that we hadn't in the past. So a few, a few uh, lessons learned that we've got here. And our initial impression was honestly, if we get a system that works together, we won't have to argue with each other as much. We won't have to talk to each other as much. What we later realized is having one system and working together actually caused us to work together more and to become more familiar with each other, which allows us to approach things differently. Um, that's one of the, the biggest benefits I think we've gotten from this effort. Our initial impressions, you know, one of those was that we need to guard our definitions and protect our versions of the data. Our, percept, our, our um, DOTs or highway safety offices approach to this data or definition, it's, the really, it's really the right one. Um, what we later realized is, is if we can combine those or we can understand each other's definitions better and adopt definitions that are required and those and create understandings of data fields that are communal, um, it really makes everybody's job easier. It makes coordination simpler and we learn more. Um, our initial impression, we, we thought our system had to do everything from the beginning. Um, it has to have, it had to have key features or it had to have all these things. And in reality, there's a, a certain subset of those wishes that were really critical. Um, and we need to focus on those and actually prioritize those, spend some time making sure those things are working and that we really understood what we were asking for uh, to be successful and move forward. So, Carrie, I'm, I'm gonna turn the time back over to you. Great, thank you. So um, this new, the UTAPS project, uh, it's been in pro uh, process for a lot of years, um, provided opportunities for communication and research. Um, the communication uh, quickly, uh, it provided the opportunity and it continues to provide opportunity for internal and external dashboards. One of the opportunities, um, Highway Safety recently implemented uh, a changeover from our annual crash report it used to be a static PDF that we would just distribute um, annually, obviously, uh, but we moved that to an online interactive format so that people could query, our partners could go online and query. So instead of having to take that static picture, uh, we now have a, a moving annual summary, so that's really nice. Database connections, um, the potential of connecting other databases to this is just unlimited, and it Every time we talk, we come up with new ideas. Linkages from other systems into UTAPs. Part of the traffic records um, process is to linking other data systems such as roadway, the assets and the characteristics of the roadway system, the EMS, um, the pre-hospital data, the emergency room data, all that is just, there's a ton of data out there. And we've talked about that for the last day, day or so of what data is out there and how can we utilize it and pulling it all together into one source. And that's the goal of what we have here with UTAPS and providing one voice for it, for all our partners to utilize. Um, linking citation data at one point so that we can uh, layer maps and tell the right story. 
And then of course, web tools to create reports and export um, this data to our partners so that we can tell the right story, we can um, message to the right groups and reach our common goal as been mentioned. The impacts to large groups that are partners with us are the Utah Highway Patrol, along with uh, our UTAPs implementing the um, dashboards and all. Utah Highway Patrol has been able to implement the DDAX initiative. And for those of you who don't know what DDAX stands for, it's the data-driven approach to crime and traffic safety. It's a, a method to allocate resources to where they need to be. And it's a, a way of overlaying maps, so to speak, with all the data to, so that the Highway Patrol can allocate their um, law enforcement activity to where we should um, and utilize our resources in the best way. Motor Carrier Division, this is how we push our safety net data from the central the crash data from the central repository to the um, MCMAS database. And we look forward to partnering them with more data analysis using our online uh, dashboards. The highway safety programs, we utilize uh, the UTAP data for our program or our problem ID. Um, the roadway safety programs, the same thing, utilize those for their problem ID. Um, new research. We've talked over the day, this last day, about how speed is a problem. It has been, but over this last year, we've all seen a spike in extreme speeding. And we'd like to, and in Utah's no different, and we'd like to work with our partners to see what we can do about that. Impairment. We're bringing in drug and alcohol um, toxicology reports to see what we can do about that. Distracted driving issues and demographics. Uh, DOT and DPS have partnered to do some studies on exactly what is Utah's distraction problem, what type, and also demographics. What, who is actually involved in our crashes and where are they? Where should we focus our efforts? And also um, close tracking of fatal and severe crashes and improvement in our reporting. This comes from working together um, through this project that we can talk about our, our related projects and come together as one voice. And we continue our coordination among our agencies and bringing in hopefully other partners. The Department of Health is another agency we hope to bring in soon. And as technology evolves, we're hoping to uh, continue our efforts with the UTAPS process and utilize new technology as that uh, grows as well. It's been a long road. It's been several years to get to this point, but we're expecting to continue working together as a team to reach our common goal of reducing fatalities and severe injuries and meeting our zero fatality goal as a state, um, pulling together all our partners. So with that, any questions? Thanks, Carrie and Robert and Juan. Uh, great information. Wow, what a project to actually make this come together and happen. I think one of the first things that came to mind to me is, do you have recommendations for other states that might be looking to do something similar? I guess uh, the, the first step is to come together and realize that the territory, you need to break down those fences. That was probably the hardest thing for us was, as was mentioned by Robert, to um, we had to step back and spend time to actually work on the definitions of our crash form. And that kind of sounds rudimentary, but we all have, we all come to this with our own perspectives and the Highway Patrol had to actually sit in with us on this. And it was a three-way partnership on that and discuss exactly what the definition of speeding was. So it came down to very basic. That's where you start basics. That's great. Uh, just a tech, uh, Dustin, do we have any questions online? Not at this time. Great. Anyone have any questions or comments in the room here? All right, great information. Thanks again, Carrie.